Hello, and welcome to this Nexperia quick learning video. I'm Richard, product manager here at Nexperia, and today I'm here to talk about the PCB layout options for MOSFETs for medium and low power automotive motor control applications. Today's example is a three phase motor drive circuit, application on the powertrain, fuel, oil, and water pump, 250 to 50 watts. Now, if we look at a three phase motor drive circuit, you have three phases, each phase contains a half bridge, a high side MOSFET and a low side MOSFET. In today's example, for medium and low power applications, we're looking at the LFPAC 33, the LFPAC 56D and the LFPAC 56D half bridge. If we start first with the LFPAC 33, an 11 millimeter squared package, 3.3 by 3.3 millimeters. You have a drain tab at the top with four extruding pins, three source pins and a gate pin. To connect in a half bridge is somewhat simple. You connect the PCB area or copper area here from the drain of the low side MOSFET to the two source pins, three source pins of the high side MOSFET. Next, we have the LFPAC 56D Dual, a 30 millimeter square package with two isolated MOSFETs inside that package. Now, this was originally released for powertrain applications, a single channel operation, predominantly fuel injection. To make that same connection, we use the right-hand device here as the high side and the left-hand device as the low side, and we route through the board to make that connection. Next, we have the LFPAC 5060 half bridge. This package makes the S1D2 connection inside with its clip technology. Now, this has some significant benefits. We have much lower inductance compared to the routing needed to connect the LFPAC 5060 dual in the motor control circuit. You do not interrupt the ground plane, which would happen with uh, the vias. You also have this low side source, which is this external pin here on the far left, which allows for better thermals on the board and better current capability. Now we compare the package footprints, PCB footprint per phase, and the S1D2 switching node voltage for the two LFPAC 56D devices. So the LFPAC 33 is 11 millimeters squared. The two LFPAC 56D devices are 30 millimeters squared in terms of package footprint. Then we come to the PCB footprint per phase. So in this, we've added an additional one millimeter squared on the X and Y of each package with some additional space for the LFPAC 33 to make this connection that you see between the two products. That means 46 millimeters squared for the LFPAC 33 60 millimeters squared for the LFPAC 5060 dual for the routing connection and the vias, compared to 42 millimeters squared for the LFPAC 5060 half bridge. We then look at the S1D2 switching node. So we took the two dual devices and compared them against each other. This is one of the common points of the half bridge. And what you see is a 10% lower spiking voltage. To really get the most out of the MOSFET, however, it's critical to design with this in mind. To do that, we have two application notes focused on LFPAC MOSFET thermal design and half bridge MOSFET switching and its impact on EMC. In conclusion, you have three package options for driving medium and low power motor control circuits. The LFPAC 33, key benefit is the positional flexibility. The LFPAC 56D dual, not quite optimized, but still uh, able to be used and the LFPAC 56D half bridge device, which is optimized for motor control applications. Thank you for joining today. For more information, please go to nexperia.com forward slash MOSFETs.